My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people, my friends, I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job. It's not just to educate, but to entertain and teach. I need you to watch. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC. Hey, tweet me, Jim Kramer. All we wanted was an all-clear sign. And we can thank Fed Chief Jay Powell for giving us one today when he spoke after the Federal Market Committee ended leaving Fed rates unchanged. Now, did he technically say you can go buy stocks now? Buy, 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 Of course not. He's the Fed Chief. But... He might have well done so. How do I know? Well, it's really this simple. You can timestamp the words of the Fed chief at his, at his press conference with the intraday chart of a strong S&P afternoon rebound. And you can see where he made some dovish comments, which carried the stock market from deep in the red to decently positive. Right then, to new heights, it was so perfectly timed bye, bye, bye. that you had no, no wonder about how we got into the... House of pleasure. Yep, Jay Powell has become the bull's friend for the moment. Maybe your best friend. Even as we pulled back into the close, now ultimately gaining 87 points, S&P dipping up 0.34%, NASDAQ declined 0.33%. Things are very skittish. But you know what? Lately, we've been worried about persistent inflation and shelter cars, foodstuffs, which might have forced the Fed to actually start raising rates again, even as there are also signs of softness, I call them brown shoots, all over the place. But fortunately, Jay Powell chose to worry more about the brown shoots than the green trees. He's betting that inflation will head lower again after a period where it's kind of stalled going down. He's not talking about tightening. He just thinks that inflation will gradually go away on its own, making him more of a dove than a hawk. When asked about stagflation, the worst case scenario for stocks, he actually made a joke. Yeah. Saying he didn't see the stag or the flation. Fed joke. Plus, Powell said he's going to slow down the Fed's bond sales, something that's been pushing longer term interest rates higher because it creates a new flood of supply. You know, supply, when there's too much, it means it's got to go to a new level, drops, and then rates go higher. But when he stopped saying he's going to pull back on that, that's a dovish sign. Of course, it's not like Powell said he's looking for a summer rate cut. But he was badgered repeatedly by the press about whether the Fed may need to raise rates again. But you know what? He's too smart. He never took the bait. Instead, with a little bit of sparring, he took the dreaded rate hike scenario off the table and the market rallied. Now, I want to make it clear that I hate even talking about Fed speak. That is a language. It's an odd jargon. Create Argo. Created by all the Fed governors and the presidents, reporters, and analysts who must just chatter each other and think it's really funny. We rallied in part because, as I just mentioned, the Fed isn't going to dump its considerable bond hoard into the market to drive rates up. But we mostly rallied because many so-called experts in the Fed had come around the idea that, the, that Powell's gotten much more hawkish of late, which could be a nightmare for stocks. Because the whole rally since last fall was based on the idea that the Fed was done tightening. Fortunately, these, these Fed speakers, well, they were wrong. <laughs> Frankly, these people who try to game the Fed are almost always going to be wrong. First, they thought that we were going to get six rate cuts. Then they said three. Then they said one. Then they said zero. And now, last week, they started talking about an actual hike. You know what? Here's what they were each time. And that's good news for the market. I think it could get more heated for the uh, rest of the week as we have to bet that the Fed was clued into Friday's employment report, even as I actually don't think that Powell's seen it because it's a tightly kept secret. So what wins in this environment? What's, what's the, what do you do? Well, pretty much everything's going to kind of work here. We can buy health care and drugs because Powell's telling you the economy is most likely going to get weaker. Buyers flock to J&J under a belief that it can finally put paid the lawsuits over allegations of traces of asbestos in their talc that plaintiffs say cause ovarian cancer. This stock's so low that I think it could go higher still if J&J can reach a comprehensive settlement. They, you know, the, the, the plaintiffs have lost 16 out of the last 17 cases against J&J, so I bet you they capitulate. Buyers flocked to the chemical stocks, too, and that was because of the huge turnaround in Kramer Fave, a travel trust named DuPont, which saw almost its entire product line accelerate. Everything from water to semiconductors. I can't believe it because it's been down and out. Buyers also reached for the home builders again. Oh, yeah, well, that's what they do when they think that there might be a rate cut. Remember my rap on the home builders. They're winners every time the Fed speaks dovishly because that's what pushes mortgage rates down and makes homes more affordable. But most important, the buyers like tech. 
They specifically like the tech companies that reported great numbers recently with stocks that have been pushed down for tangential reasons. Remember, I always tell you, look to buy these in our general market pull down like we had. First tech that they love, well, of course, the buyers reached for Amazon, which reported last night an absolutely tremendous lights out quarter. With strength in Amazon Web Services, advertising in Amazon International, you absolutely have to love that troika of positives. Amazon's at the top of the class when it comes to generative AI. It's got so much going for that it's almost too long to list here. It was a smash hit. If you get a chance to read the release, you will be blown away. Second is Alphabet. Remember I said that Alphabet, the parent of Google, has to be bought on any weakness. Sure enough, you got big weakness yesterday. It was time to pounce. Alphabet has some amazing properties. YouTube's doing great. Google Cloud is terrific. And what a good artificial intelligence platform to say nothing of the core search business. Third is Microsoft. Have you seen this stock? This thing is just getting killed. It had fallen to a level below where it was trading before that amazing quarter. I think there's nothing better than owning Microsoft right now, and the, you got to check that box as my Chapel Trust has. Beyond tech, this market likes the banks. Their stocks have been so strong in the notion that they'll get, eventually get rate cuts, even as their stocks shouldn't really even need rate cuts. Confounding, but I'll take it. More on what may be the best bank to buy later in the show. What's not working? Mm, some of the semiconductors. Because AMD produced a weaker-than-expected quarter, as people who focus on its embedded business and its gaming business were disappointed. While those who were concerned about a data center slowdown were spooked by a lowball boost in their forecast for generative AI chips. Now, I believe that CEO Lisa Su was simply being conservative, so I'm not going to sweat this program. Perhaps people fear that Supermicro, that's a compadre of AMD, might have to raise cash after its largely in-line data, that's revenues in-line, uh, numbers freaking out the whole AI infrastructure. If you near the end of the, of the report, you'll see it says, hey, maybe we have to raise money, and that's what killed the stock. Oh, and there's, uh, there's no data center slowdown, none, none that anybody can find, and yet people keep looking for one, which brings me to NVIDIA. These days, NVIDIA seems to rally far less often than it goes down, doesn't it? Given that every one of its large tech des customers desperately needs their chips, we know that Amazon said it needed them last night. So did Google, no doubt, with Oracle, absolutely meta. They said they're spending fortunes on stuff, but apparently that's not enough. I think people just believe that anything connected to the data center should be avoided, and NVIDIA won't report for a very long time. So I think they're going to shoot at it, shoot at it. My view, of course, is to own it, don't trade it, but I totally understand if people are going to sell it. That's what they do. By the way, later on in the show, we talk about Apple. I'm seeing the same thing. Do you want to dodge a quarter? Do you want to dodge it? Be my guest. I'm never good enough to know when to get in and get out, so I'm sticking. While I disagree with the NVIDIA ver uh, verdict, verdict, I know it's severe. It says dump the semis and buy the users of their chips, buy the customers instead. You know, I've, I've railed again, endlessly against these Fed heads, those analyst, strategists, and journalists who attempt to interpret everywhere from the Federal Reserve. Can, they can at all, at all times be more important than what's happening at any individual company. The good news is the Fed only meets eight times a year. The bad news is that Friday we get the employment report, and that produces a whole other set of, com of macro commentators we're going to second-guess Jay Powell for what he said even today, 48 hours later. Don't these, these guys should get better jobs. Here's my view. Tune these people out. They're all, there's only one person worth listening to in this entire universe when it comes to this stuff, and that happens to be the plain-speaking Fed chief himself, Jay Powell. He's been consistent the whole time. He raised rates until he feared he could tip us in a recession. Then he stopped raising rates and the economy got hot again. But then interest rates went higher on their own, and now we've gotten some brown shoots that are helping to slow the economy. So the bottom line is this, people. Powell took all this in and recognized that in these newfound brown shoots means he doesn't need to raise interest rates again. He's consistent, and that puts us in a much better position. Until we fret about Apple and how China sunk it, that's tomorrow's business, by the way, addressed later in the, in the show tonight. And we get concerned that we have, might have strong wage growth data on Friday's job report, which would cause a whole new group of critics to question Powell's judgment. Hence why we reversed in the last half hour of trading today, as if, once again, Powell doesn't mean what he says. Hey, how about we go to Gary in my homestead of Pennsylvania? Gary. Hey, Mr. Kramer, I am in the house of pain with Bristol Myers over the last couple of months. Shed some wisdom on me, please. Love your show. Man, what a terrible address, frankly. Um, okay, now here's the problem with that. They the told you, they told you when we were at J.P. Morgan that, look, 
We don't have the horses uh, now, but the dividend is safe. So, I mean, what that was was the clarion call to move out. At these prices, I still think the clarion call is on because I don't see anything in the hopper. feels a little like Pfizer to me. Let's go to Max in Illinois. Max. Jimbo. Yo. Hey, how's it going? Not bad. How about you, partner? I'm good. Oh, hey, good. so you're always preaching stocks that uh, are best in class, and uh, for me, there's none more promising and holy than Costco. What say you? I like Costco very much. Now, Costco is what's happening. We've got a new CEO. We've got a new CFO. Um, and there are always going to be people who say, well, you know what? The stock paid the dividend. It's over. I think the stock is basing. More on basing later in the show. But that's what the stock is doing in basing, and that makes me like it. I think Jay Powell has realized that these brown shoots are doing some of the work for him. And his consistent messaging in the face of endless Fed speak tells me that I think you should just hang on to stocks. And when we get those pullbacks like we had the other day, yes, you want to buy Google, you want to buy Amazon. You, look, you want to buy Meta even. How about that? And Microsoft for certain. Jay Powell knows what he's doing. The people who talk about him don't. Much more mad money ahead. Restaurant stocks have become a tough corner of the market. Haven't they? After reporting a strong quarter, could Wingstop be the winner, winner chicken dinner in the space? I got this exclusive with the CEO. Then my alma mater, Goldman Sachs, recently hit a new all time high. But could the momentum continue? I'm going off the charts to find out. And Tanger reported a solid quarter last night, but saw its stock got hit in response. Hmm, head scratching. I'm going to break down the numbers with the CEO to get a better sense of where the company stands. So I want you to stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.